favor and check out all the shows on YouTube. We have our own channel called The Corpse Paint yeah. Show. Please check and them out. Subscribe. Thank you. Yes, but on Become this an official subscriber. On this episode, we're going to be talking about the future of music and the future of musicians and the future of where society is going. That's what we're talking about. And our reoccurring theme is Sweden. Yeah, we're going to be talking to Claire Cunningham. I think she's in Stockholm. We're going to be talking about dead, uh, uh, dark funeral, dark funeral right now. Yeah, I am. Yes. Okay. So Claire, I, you know, I follow what you're doing. You have a great YouTube channel. You've got lots going on in a short while. We're going to show your single called whiskey talks. Heck yeah, because it <laughs> yeah. does talk. And, yeah. but Tell me what's what are you are you solo now or is the band is the uh, is the rock band kind of on on uh, the back burner at the moment or and I'm referring to Thunder Mother. Yeah, 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 precisely. Um, yeah, no, I'm completely solo now. Um, I left the band in January, um, but so did uh, three others. Oh, so okay. the band is still going, but it's a whole new lineup. Yeah. Uh, so I now have just got my uh, solo career kind of, I always kind of did have my solo uh, thing yeah. on the side anyway. Yeah. Uh, but now it's a full, a, a full time kind of concentration of mine. So um, yeah, it's, 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 it's been really good actually. Um, it's been a successful year so far. So. And, and yeah, it seems like every so often, uh, every couple of months or so, or, or maybe it's more often than that, there's a new video popping up of you, and they're all excellent. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, I try and keep as active as possible online. Um, it's kind of important nowadays, and visually as well. Um, I'd like to do more music videos myself. Uh, but in any case, um, I always put up the, um, you know, the... Um, the actual audio tracks as well of sure. singles on YouTube, just like, you know, instead of just having Spotify and iTunes, it's, it's, it's because I know I get a lot of traffic through YouTube just by chance. So sometimes the more places you have it, like I've SoundCloud, Reverb Nation, uh, not to mention of course, Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and <laughs> everything else. Yeah. And now I have uh, Google Hangouts as well. Yeah. So I, I get the impression that when you're not singing at a gig, you're very busy keeping uh, uh, Twitter updated and everything, right? Yeah. Like, I'm not sure people realize, like, how long social media takes. Yes, it does. It does. It's you have time to keep up with social media. Yeah, it's, it's like almost like a full-time job <laughs> on yeah. top of a job. <laughs> I know. And then, you know, I'm posting something, maybe you're this way too. And, and then I want to like triple check it before I, and sometimes I run it past Janie slash, she's our co-host here, or, yeah. or I double check the spelling and I don't want to offend anyone. And so I'm second guessing myself, you know, and, and then the, the worst <laughs> is when you've boosted it and you can't edit it. And yeah. I'll be like, hey, that one word's misspelled. And he'll be like, what? And I'm like, it's misspelled. And he'll try to go fix it. And he's like, but it's boosted. Yeah, it's so you have to like delete yeah. the whole campaign. Yeah. <laughs> So, I actually, I, I, um, I was going through my, uh, I don't do it very often, but I opened up my bank account and I was like, oh, why am I being, I'm getting so much charges for these things. I didn't realize I had boosted one thing one time on Facebook, but had accidentally hit lifetime. Oh. So oh. everything <laughs> that I was putting up was getting, was getting boosted. So I had this like ridiculous like a bill <laughs> it's like how can i stop it so yeah that took a few hours to even sort just to go through the whole thing but yeah it's it, it, it is great you know but i without social media now you wouldn't i don't think it's you wouldn't survive in the music industry without some form of it um because it's how it's how we communicate nowadays yes. um, you know in one way it's nice and it's easy, um, but in other ways, I think, you know, the old school way of sticking up a poster, you know, we're playing in this venue, you know, that was kind of not really my era so much, but I think it would have been, it's, there's a nicer touch to it that way. You than, bet. Hey, mm -hmm. um, we found a cool picture of you on Instagram, but I think there was a link to it from Twitter. Uh, mm. that, that was yeah. pretty cool. And I didn't, I didn't realize you had all the arm tattoos and, and all of that. And. 
Uh, yeah, though, there it is. Okay, we popped it up I here. Have, now. I have so many. I have like my arms and now my I my legs, my whole side leg on the right is done. My thigh and chin is done on um, on my left leg. So I, I'm pretty much covered. Uh, <laughs> still got more. <laughs> Uh, the lovely lady sitting to my right also has lots of tattoos and she's talking about her next one, you know, and yes, I it's think it, he has no tattoos. Well, no now, you, you know what, in, in, in some ways, it's kind of cooler nowadays yeah. to have none because you're a clean slate and now every, well, especially here in Scandinavia, like I think the population, it's like something like 70 or 80% of people have like tattoos it's like a it's a very common thing here you could walk into a bank or doctors police everybody here has them and it's not like you don't cover them up um huh. back home in ireland it's like you know i wouldn't get i wouldn't get a job anywhere like literally isn't that funny so, yeah yeah <laughs> is it because they're called job stoppers <laughs> but i never <laughs> job stoppers. I never really um I was never the kind to really go for a job as per se, you know, music was always what I was into anyway. So in, in, in one respect, the more I have kind of the cooler it is in one respect, you know. So. I agree. Look, <laughs> I agree. I, uh, to put a backspin on this real quick, I did want to say, I'm glad that you recognize that YouTube is important. And uh, there's, there's a, I don't know, I think a large group of us music fans who are very visual like mm -hmm. me, and we we like the visual aspect and whatever you pop up. I, I've watched that Supercharger video uh, a few times and mm -hmm. and I, I just like your part of it. But yeah. we'll, we'll show. I mean, we'll, I personally, I personally probably like 85 percent of the music I listen to is off of YouTube because it's easily accessible, especially for people who work desk jobs like I do, where you're just sitting there and it's easy to pop up. There you go. And listen to versus. And, it, to get a and it's, it's a great platform. I like, you know, you got to remember. And for anybody who doesn't know the story, the reason why I'm even sitting on my couch right now in Scandinavia is because of YouTube. <laughs> you know, I got a phone call back in, yeah, 2013. And that was the phone call that got me uh, into Thunder Mother because of YouTube, because I'd never even been on YouTube. and. And myself and uh, Jamie, the old guitarist, um, when I was living in the UK, had put up, I think it was like 39 videos or something like that. It was ridiculous. Uh, one afternoon. And that's how I yeah. got discovered to be in Thunder Mother. And then through Thunder Mother, I'm here. And, you know, it's crazy. And I have YouTube, especially thanks for that. So that's why... I've always pushed YouTube a lot because, Good. and like you said yourself, like a lot of people can be very visual, especially the older generation too, mm -hmm. as well, you know? And nowadays, like I know it's very easy to stick on Spotify, but I think there's something more personal about being able to see an artist or at least, you know, um, yeah, watch a visual as well. There's something so so pure about that, I think. Now, I've been following you on, uh, on on Twitter and all of that, but I'm not a stalker. But I did want to just point out that uh, did uh, did you have <laughs> – I like how you to clarify that you're not a stalker. <laughs> just all you had to say was, I follow you on Twitter. <laughs> I'm not worry, a stalker not a sounds ball. like you <laughs> are a stalker. Well, okay. But, Claire, you spent a good amount of time in the U.S. of A. this, this summer, right? Yeah, I did. Um, so I was actually, that's so weird you should say that because I've just stuck up a, another picture now on Instagram. Um, so this summer we decided, because me and my siblings, we all, and my family, we all kind of live in different parts of the world. I have a brother in Australia, Ian, uh, I have a brother back home, Mark, and a sister of mine, uh, Laura. Uh, she lives on Nantucket Island. Oh. So, um, and it's beautiful there. Wow. Yes. Um, but, um, and with my folks back in Ireland, we always have uh, once a year, we try and vacate somewhere um, because cool. it's not always possible for us to all be back home for Christmas or that. And uh, we spoke, my brother had to come home from Australia to be a best man for his wedding, uh, for his best friend's wedding. And we were all saying, oh, we'll have to go back to Ireland and say hi. It was in August. But then he was like, hell no, let's, let's go to Vegas. <laughs> all right, then. 
if we must <laughs> so yeah so i popped over to la so we all met in la so i just took a few days myself um in la and then yeah we did la vegas and then i went over as i do every year then to nantucket uh to my sister as well Great. so it was, it was amazing i i just i love 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 the us <laughs> good it, that was the summer i need to go though i keep it's on my bucket list. Well, thank you. Cool. Yeah, we, we, we love to host you. And, you know, we have some lot of cool sites right here in our humble town and a very, very neat artsy district called Deep Ellum that I call the yeah. entertainment capital of Texas. I remember you telling me about this, I think, the last time. So because my plan is, you know, I'm um, I'm going to be going to Nashville. So um, with with that in mind, I'll be closer to you. Yeah. And as soon as I am there. And we're going <laughs> to, I'm going to see all the sites Good. of Dallas. Well, oh. even if you have a stopover in the Dallas airport, just let us know and we'll come have coffee with you or what have you. You are, you're first on my, on my hit list. I was going to say that's not well, right. <laughs> uh, no, that's fine. Hey, so. Uh, <laughs> you don't want to be on her hit list? We have to give clear. Uh, no, uh, no, no, no. He said that's fine. No. I'm so confused. Well, yeah. He can be on your list. Look, what I'm saying is we're going to give uh, Claire all the leeway we need to because I think she had a gig tonight. And it's also like two in the morning over there. I know. I so know. I'm just joking. We appreciate you. you know, I, yes, like thank I you. said, like I am. Um, it's so funny because I get a lot of people who, you know, different stations and, oh, if it's too late for you to stay up, we can do a pre-recording. And I'm like, hey, listen, I go to bed. It's like six o'clock in the morning. So it's, <laughs> it's all gravy. Like, you know. <laughs> hey, so have you been to Nashville yet? Yes. Okay. I have. All right. All right. All right cool. Went uh, last September. Um, so yeah, my sister actually came out and visited me. Um, I, 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 it was on the bucket list for years, and I turned the big three zero last year, and I wanted. It was always I wanted to go, and there was nobody kind of around or available to go, and I thought, feck it, I'm going to go myself. So I went to Austin and Nashville, and I right. just had best time ever yes indeed man that's cool mm -hmm. uh, look yeah. Yeah. Our, uh, look i love it when you sing rock i love that and i'm, I'm trying to place what it reminds me of uh, janice joplin i don't i don't know yeah, uh, I love it. but uh, okay but you know i don't want to be like all those people it, it's it's claire cunningham's voice mm -hmm. this is a powerful pipes lady and <laughs> uh but do you do you do you prefer a more mellow song yeah so like the thing with me um and what i found over the years um especially from playing live i i have always loved singing rock uh rock has been something i've done for forever um but you know my background is country irish folk music sure and so for me singing rock i get all the balls out i get the like you know the energy's flowing and i really can go for it but something inside me awakens when i do something really emotional yes uh, yes um i don't know it's hard to explain and especially when i song write as well because my lyrics i'm i'm a very emotional writer like and <laughs> it's so funny because i'm so positive and energetic but when i write i tend to <laughs> that's when my sad side comes out or that's usually when I find I'm, I'm, I'm more like, you know, mellow. Um, so with that, like, and I'm very versatile. I think I've, I've done a lot of different styles of music and can do maybe because of the troubadour lifestyle. I, I you know, you have to do a lot of genres. So sure. um, it keeps you kind of not stuck in the one thing all the time. Um, but yeah, I think for me personally, when I when I'm on a stage and I'm doing a really emotional song, that when you can hear a pin drop in the room, I think yeah, not that. Really not, you're funny. right. You're right. I, I I know what you're referring to. I really do. And so when you did your gig tonight, is it is it you on acoustic guitar? What, is that how you're kind of gigging at the moment in Stockholm? Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's how I've been doing it for quite a while now. Um, so it's just me and the acoustic guitar. And I do a lot of covers, obviously, because that's, you know, I'm playing in all the Irish bars. But yeah. uh, luckily, it's been amazing, too, because I actually always do my original material um, when I when I play. And a lot of 
people over the years now have realized I, I do uh, original and uh, they've actually started requesting my songs Good. and they're singing along and yeah. that's really nice, you know. Yes. Um, it's <laughs> even last night, I, uh, somebody asked me to do Whiskey Talks and I obviously there was a lot of people in the room who didn't know it, but there was two guys and I could see them trying to sing along and it was really special actually because I know they were drunk. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was such a nice moment to see people who actually don't know my material trying to sing along or getting to know it. And you know, or I've had people come up and say, Oh, uh, if I haven't said it's mine, for instance, or they have missed that, and they say, well, what, who wrote that song? Who, what artist has that song? I really liked that song. And I'm like, who, it's me. It's you. So yeah. that's kind of nice too, you Be know. Yeah, I, I can see that. So in Ireland, maybe more so than the rest of the world, they assume everything you're doing is mm -hmm. a traditional Irish song. And, and so therefore, this question would come up, yeah, who, who wrote that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and it's a really nice moment sometimes yes. because you know you get and 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 through and through doing like the troubadour stuff and everything. I like you know even tonight with some Canadians in as well, and they were like, "You have two new fans," and you know it's yeah. really nice, you know. So, um, yeah, there there are times when people are fast like, "Oh, who is the artist?" But I do tend to tell people if I'm doing one of my own, that it is one of my own. Um, Good. so because you'll find they'll listen a little more intricately than they would if oh, they didn't interesting. Know. Mm -hmm. And, and do you like this power you have to like emotionally take people to the edge with your songs and then, and then you, you <laughs> control their feelings, don't you? You're the yeah. one in control. Um, to be honest, it, sometimes I close my eyes because if I see somebody crying, that makes me almost cry. I don't know yeah. what that is or what, that emotional thing is but there are some songs even on release now uh, i will be getting some more out um there's one in particular that's going to be really good and and it has made people cry um it's called the battle the battle uh, it was going to be my next release but i've just realized with the time that i have because i'm leaving in december um i have my leaving song i've already written oh uh, final chapter yeah it's going to come out hopefully december probably the 19th or 20th because i'm going to leave sweden on december 22nd um uh, so uh i have a song and it's called the final chapter and it's basically originally written when i left thunder mother because um you know it was a lot of good times and i closed that book and I never released it and I had it written and it's actually a piano song that I've done. Um, and now I had the idea, well, if I'm leaving Sweden as well, all the lyrics kind of make sense to that too. Uh, and it will also make sense to probably people who have broken up in a relationship as well. So it has many, many meanings behind it. Sure. Mm -hmm. You take what they need, but, um, yeah, that's going to, be be released so i've actually for the first time ever heard back one of the first mixes and cried myself oh. i thought i can make myself cry yeah <laughs> you know because that's that's kind of a hard thing to do when you're an artist and um, sometimes you'll sit and you'll you'll think wow okay this is a good song or but sometimes if i myself am playing a song and it makes me emotional, probably more so because it's more personal. Then I think I've got a good song. <laughs> yes, indeed. And it's because, uh, I, I don't know, in my opinion, it's because it's the Irish in you, of course. And, uh, I, you know, look, when when an Irish song can just, just take you so high and so low and then and then also just make you dance like crazy, too, I, it's the yeah. most – it's the most – wonderful uh, type of music on the planet at, at, at that moment. It really is. And, yeah, and so really and with Irish songs, there's a lot that are about leaving, about travel, about the ocean, about uh, the journey, right? Is that a good way to say it? Yeah, you've summed it all up. And in fact, I have written um, a, a song uh, because I wanted to always do an Irish song, you know, a, a typical acapella, because 
um, I'm known here in Stockholm and in Sweden and around Scandinavia for doing a beautiful song called She Moved Through the Fair. And I do it a cappella, completely a cappella, and mm -hmm. I just have my guitar as a little beat. Um, and I wanted to do something like that similar myself. And I've, it's in the finishing stages, and I've called it um, Erin in Machri, which means Ireland in my heart. And um, I've, I've, I've summed it all up like that, like with traveling and the ocean and, and all the typical things yeah. that we always put into songs. But right, right. Yeah, they're so emotional. Like there's so, something so, so, so pure about yeah. our music. And, you know, and especially more so when you don't live in Ireland, you really appreciate a lot of it and the lyrics and, the, and you can really feel the heartache you know there's yes. there's great it's storytelling yes um, is what I love about irish music you it's know. storytelling that's why, that's why like so, oh sorry that's why when people always like especially in the irish bars want molly malone or mm -hmm. the wild rover because if i play the wild rover one more time i think <laughs> i'm gonna cry um or like whiskey in the jar don't yeah. get me wrong they're they're yeah. great songs great yeah. like sing along song galway girl but yeah i always tell people hey look um if you want to hear some real good old irish traditional music i'm here and i'm gonna give it to you now so yeah and they're always like wow you no know, yeah we didn't know this kind of music existed so yeah it's true to the heart that's for sure side question here you wrote whiskey talks are you a whiskey drinker yeah, so here's the thing, right? Um, yes, and um, I've actually stopped drinking uh, completely. Um, I had whiskey two weeks ago, I think, a hot whiskey, because I was feeling like a little cold. Come on, I'm telling you, out there in the world, if you have a cold or you have you feel like a cold is coming on, hot whiskey is like a lifesaver. <laughs> um, but yeah, I did. Um, whiskey would be my go-to in fact it was on my rider whenever i played shows with thunder mother <laughs> and it was literally like i was getting a bottle of of like jemson or wherever we were every show i was like no no i only need a shot right like, i don't yeah. need a whole bottle Just a shot. <laughs> that's dangerous okay um, but whiskey for me because i think well one it's got like you know got good antiseptic qualities to it. You know, as a kid growing up in Ireland, you weren't given like, you know, a painkiller. You you got some like whiskey if you if you had a tip <laughs> coming through. No, this is for real, like okay. <laughs> um so and whiskey for me, I think it's a lovely, it's a lovely, nice drink that like i d I'm not so much a shooter. Like if I wanna have a whiskey it's gonna be enjoyed. Um like and I don't mix it with anything. I think it's nice, just either on the rocks, one rock only, uh, but preferably none. Um, but it's a nice, like slow drink. Um, because it's you know, it's so high percentage. But whiskey talk, so when people say, Oh, well, you don't drink, and I'm like, Yeah, but when I do, or what I always <laughs> say, my poison has always been whiskey, yeah, for sure. So um, yeah, go on. No, I'm sorry. I you go on. I, I apologize. I didn't mean to stop you. No, I tend to ramble so much. <laughs> I, I forget sometimes what the question is when I'm talking so much. But yes, whiskey talks is is actually a true song. Um, and actually, I originally um, nobody knows this, but I had originally um, titled it "Whiskey Tears," um, because you'll hear that lyric in the song. But then I decided to rename it Whiskey Talks um, and Whiskey Tears because literally like, I don't know about you, uh, but with alcohol, certain drinks make certain people feel a different way. Whiskey <laughs> always would make me cry. Um, so this is a this is a true song. It's completely gotcha. like, you know, um, for real, whiskey does make you talk, but it also makes me cry. <laughs> gotcha. And so <laughs> it, I don't drink it anymore. <laughs> if you're if you're announcing on stage that you're gonna sing this song or you're actually in the process of singing it, is there a polite way then for you to turn down all of the gentlemen who are gonna come up with a shot of whiskey for you? <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, yeah, I usually end up uh, asking, are there any whiskey drinkers in, in the house? Of course, you'll get most of the room like, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, and yeah, every now and again, people will come up with a shot or something. But, you know, nice and all that it is, I, I don't any longer take <laughs> drinks from strangers yeah. or anything like that. I, I'm, I, I don't know, uh, no, sometimes. Claire, I'm glad yeah. I, I'm glad you said that. I am glad you said that. It, we we all all of us in this room are in the entertainment industry, and we all have to be very cautious. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've unfortunately I've had a few incidences which have made you know me very weary of yeah. trusting people. Unfortunately, and you know I'm I'm a very open, honest person, and sometimes people you know will take advantage of that and. You know, and I deal with a lot of people who do drink alcohol on a daily basis. And, you know, my tolerance level or my patience level is not very high anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I understand. So, um, you know, and I just, I'm, I'm a very private person. You know, people see, especially when, when I was out in the road with the girls, people see this like very confident, um, you know, persona on a stage and you're very open and you're welcome. But I'm actually uh, quite the opposite um, as a person. I'm very, very private, and I like to keep my own things and my family and and sure. everything to, to to just me or the handful of people that I choose to to let the real me out. You know, because uh, being in the public eye a lot and getting like my life is very much invaded online so as much as i can i do try to just you know take a step back a little so sure. uh yeah and that includes personal space unfortunately people think it's okay to you know oh grab and smell your hair or oh. twist your arm to see a tattoo but you know yeah that's weird <laughs> you know it's it's yeah i i have many stories but we'd be here till the crack of dawn so well, I, I, no, the message is is made, and uh, I'm I'm glad you brought it up. I, I I I am. Look, this is something that we all need to just be a little adult about. You can't just go grab Claire's arm to look at her exactly. tattoo. <laughs> no, but I don't mind. You know, a lot of people they're just very curious, and I get I I do understand that people often wonder why I do what I do or where I am. It's just, you know, I suppose maybe for me now I realize that I have to stop because, you know, it's just getting a little much the repetition of answering the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, this is why I, I hope that we have never asked you a boring question. I really oh, God, do. No, I'm not, I'm not oh. actually referring to interviews or anything like that. I oh, mean, yeah. uh, like, because I actually like to do things like this because this is, this is us talking. It's a different story when somebody's half cut coming up to you asking you what your name is, why you're here, <laughs> what age are you? you know, yeah. It's yeah. like you're not even going to remember. Or, this. or asking you the history behind every single tattoo you have and like what other tattoos do you have and where are they and you're like i don't really want to have this discussion with you right now but you have to act yeah, cool yeah, because you're, you're in this awkward all the time, yeah. yeah it's or, an awkward position you're in yeah. so you have to kind of act like you're cool with it but at the same time try to get the hell out of there as best as possible yeah. Yeah. short but sweet because yes. <laughs> right. yes. i'm never i'm not i'm not i'm not rude and i think you're probably the same like you don't want to you know, come across as a nasty person or anything like yeah. that. So, and I have, I have all the time in the world for people who are actually genuinely interested in having a conversation yeah. and not mm -hmm. just, you know, another pickup line or yeah. just, you know, or I get asked, I ha literally genuinely have been asked, are they real? I'm like, no, I get up at six o'clock every morning and I draw them on. Or no, actually I'm trying to wash <laughs> them off, but I'm not having much luck. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. All the silly Come on. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> Is that the question? <laughs> Claire Cunningham, we are big fans of you mm -hmm. and I appreciate you revisiting our show and we're gonna try and be around forever and we wanna <laughs> always stay in touch with you guys and or, or with you, Claire. And and so you said December 22nd and the song final chapter. That's is that about the time frame when we can maybe find that? Yeah, exactly. So um, I was speaking with the studio the other day and they said, let's um, release it on the 23rd. And I said, well, hey, no, 
better that I have it just before I go, you know. So um, this is why I can't do, because I wanted to release two more tracks before I left. But um, the time scale it takes to get uh, Spotify now have this uh, new legislation where everything must be kind of uh, security checked. Um, and it's now because of the Christmas rush or whatever they've said, it can take up to three weeks for songs to get validated. Okay. So instead of trying to release two songs really fast and beside each other, I've decided to go with this one, the final chapter. So with the mindset, hopefully, of around December 19th. All right. 20, so, yeah, so, we also have okay. a really other cool idea for it. And um, because I've almost, you know, it would have been five years um, coming over and back to Scandinavia in January. I have obviously a lot of footage and a lot of photos and a lot of memories from here. So we've decided maybe we can do a video. An emotional video. Oh, I know. It's going to be... I was gathering some stuff for it the other day and I was like, God, I'm like, this is so hard, you know. It's 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 another chapter again. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then um, uh, CSR, the guy in the studio, was like, well, how about we go to the airport with you and get some footage of you there? Oh. And, and then the plane leave and I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to be a mess. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's like yeah. I've done this a few times now. I've done a lot of moving in my life and and it's always the people that, you know, it, it's so hard to, to leave because I get so attached to things and people yeah. and places. But, you know, this is why I need to 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 move to the US now and, and be at my hopefully last move and All right. set up a life, proper life for myself now. Well, we, we welcome you. Come on over. Yeah. Can you stamp my visa? <laughs> <laughs> Claire Cunningham, we appreciate you so much. And look, we're going to play right now uh, a bit or maybe the entire song of Whiskey Talks. And I love your voice in this one. Very powerful. And, hey, thanks for sharing with us and being honest with us. And, and, and all of these great stories are, are really helpful, I think, and, mm -hmm. and fascinating. We like you. Yeah. Oh, well, I like you too, guys. And thank you for the support because it really always means so much. People in general have just been fantastic, especially guys like yourselves and radio stations who who I hopefully will, you know, be on again and again and again. And, um, you know, just for everybody who always just is there, like listening, streaming, buying, um, mm -hmm. you know, as an artist, it truly, truly means the world. Um, and thank you very, very, very much. You're, you're very welcome. It's got to be a good feeling, but you you definitely have a lot of fans. And I, I hope that is a good feeling for you, Claire. It, it, no, honestly, it really is. I don't think people realize that, you know, I think people think when you have a fan, you have a fan forever, but it, that, that's not always the case. And... For me, I, I want the fans to always know that I truly, 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 truly appreciate everything that yes. they have given, their time, their energy, even their, their money for buying tracks and supporting it and just for, for the love. Um, you know, you have to always step back and think without fans, without people out there liking and buying your music, mm -hmm. you can't really do what you do. Or if you do, you're going to be doing it in your bedroom. So to have platforms and people like yourselves to push artists and, and unknown artists, um, it's really important and really um, much, much appreciated. You're very welcome, Claire. Claire Cunningham. All right. Thanks again for staying up late Thank with us. Thank you, Claire. <laughs> it's fine. Anytime. Claire. Her song is Whiskey Talks, and we're going to play it now. Thank you, Claire. We'll talk to you soon, I hope, and, uh, and speak to you on any new developments you have coming up. Bye now. Yeah. Bye. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. Claire, she's leaving Scandinavia. Yeah. Leaving Stockholm. Mm -hmm. Coming to America, I guess. All right, so you're riding, you're riding lunatic side. You can see that there. I'm what? You're riding the lunatic side. I can't read it. I don't have my glasses on. And I suffer from CSD. Yeah. That's all right. Go for it. So, Whiskey Talks. A CD. Uh, oh, SCD, Sinful yeah. compulsive disorder. CSD okay. is what I used to do for a living customer service. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs>
<clears throat> we I hear, don't really we, ride the lunatic side. Like, what does that even mean? <clears throat> we want to hear Claire's voice, and you're going to love it. And it is kind of whiskey-soaked, but whiskey does talk, and that's her song title. Rock and roll voice. You know, I like whiskey. Yeah. That's rock and roll voice yes, singing a, a whiskey roll, song. Singing a whiskey song. Yeah, that's a rock and roll voice singing a whiskey song. I, I think agree. she has a great voice. Oh, yeah. Beautiful and if she voice. she sings a mellow song, a slow song, whatever, or a, or a rocker, you know, mm -hmm. I, that that's that's a great voice. She mentioned my drink. Made me happy. Whiskey? Jameson. Oh, 